Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Reaper for film scoring and how to use it for media composition in general. Let's get right into it. So once you create a new project, you're going to go to File, Project Settings, and the first thing you want to change is the project sample rate. By default, it's set to 44.1 kilohertz. That's the standard for music streaming, but for video work and specifically for filmmaking and film scoring, uh, you want to use 48 kilohertz. So you click on the drop down menu and you select 48. Now you want to go to the video tab and you want to make sure that your frame rate is the same as your video. So I'm going to look for my video file and this is a video I'm going to be scoring. And as you can see, it's 30.01 frames per second. That's a very strange frame rate. The usual frame rate for filmmaking is 24 frames per second. For TV series, it's usually 30 frames per second if you're in the US and in the UK, I believe it's 25. In this case, since it's going to be 30, I'm going to go back to Reaper and I'm going to make sure it's in 30 FPS and I'm going to click OK. Now I can go back to my Explorer and I can simply drag my video into Reaper and Reaper is gonna generate the waveform automatically. This is the audio from my video. To be able to see the video, you're gonna go to View and then click on Video or Control Shift B. And here's our video player. And now one problem that I encountered very quickly was that when I changed the tempo, look what happens to the video. Here we have 120 BPM. I'm going to change that to 150. You can see that the video gets shorter. I'm going to open my video window. You have your robotics and I just want to be up. You can see that now the video is faster than it should be. And to avoid that problem, you want to right click on the item, go to item settings, and then select same time base to time. Now, whenever you change the VPM, the video stays the same. Perfect. Now we want to set the rulers to frames per second. If we zoom in, we can see that we are seeing up here on the rulers, the beats of the measures. I'm going to turn on my metronome just so you can hear that every line is a beat. but we can't see the frames. You want to be able to distinguish the frames so you can spot where the cuts are in case you want to be hitting any moments in the film. To be able to see the frames in the ruler, you're going to right click on the ruler itself. And then you can see that it's selected to measures and beats, which is fine for music. But right now we want hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. And now you can see individual frames but I can't really select them because we are snapping to beats. So I'm going to right click on the magnet and then I'm going to drop down to frames. I'm going to close this and now it's going to snap to the frames of the video. I'm going to zoom in between two seconds so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So here is second 19 and here's second 20. And in between I have the 30 frames. So you can see that I can move and it's going to snap to each frame individually. I usually go down to the timer and I right click and I set it to use ruler time unit. And now we can spot the film much easier. Now let's say that we want our music to hit a specific cut. So let's look for some place where we would like the music to hit. Okay, I'm going to use this moment when she turns into the robot. So let's look for the frame with the impact and the waveform is going to help us a lot actually because we can see the impact in the waveform. Let's say right in that frame. I'm going to hit M to have a marker exactly in that frame and I'm going to see if the metronome is hitting that mark exactly. So I want to be able to see the beats again in the ruler so I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to measures and beats and I'm going to change the snap tool as well. So right click and then go to one four. And now we can see the individual beats. So it is not hitting. It is in between these two bits. So let's say that we want this beat right here to hit in this marker. We're going to have to move the tempo and make it faster. 
And if we want that B to be the start of a new measure, we're gonna have to make this measure a two half notes measure, or we can fit six quarter notes in this measure and have just one big measure. I'm gonna make it six quarter notes. So I'm gonna click on that beat, then right click and insert tempo time signature, or we can also go to insert and then look for tempo time signature or just shift C. And now I'm gonna check set time signature and I'm gonna make it six quarter notes, hit okay. And now we can see that we have six quarter notes in that measure. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. Perfect. To make that beat hit that marker, we're gonna have to increase the tempo. So we can also shift C and then set the tempo to something faster. Let's try 130. Now we have another problem. We can see that the marker moved as well. So I'm gonna hit Ctrl C. And to avoid that problem, we're gonna go to File, Project Settings. And then where it says Time Base for Items, Envelopes and Markers, which is what we want, we're gonna click the drop down menu and select Time. Click OK. And now we can change the tempo, Shift C, 130. And now the ruler changed, but the markers stayed in the same place in time. I'm gonna zoom in and I can tell that the marker is still a little bit before, so we're gonna make it a little bit faster. I'm gonna make it 131, 130.5. That's still a little bit too fast. That's just how this is, 130.2. That's enough for me. <laughs> so I'm gonna Control Shift V, and now we're gonna see if we're hitting that cut. And I'm gonna decrease the volume a little bit to be able to hear the metronome. I should just crush you. Oh, no. Perfect. Now, sometimes we want the tempo to change gradually. So to do that, we're gonna go to View, Tempo Envelope, or just Alt T. And now we get this track showing us our tempo changes. You can put the cursor on top of the line and then when you hit one of the keys like Control, Shift or Alt, it's gonna tell you what it's gonna do when you click on it. So you can, for example, Control click for a freehand draw envelope. You can do stuff like this. But most importantly, we can, for example, go to this measure, control click, and it's gonna snap to the grid. And we can move this anywhere, like let's say we want it to be faster. And by default, it's a sudden change. But we can also right click and select both of the points, then right click in one of them. Then we go to set shape for selected points and change to linear. And now we have a linear change. One thing that I forgot to say about the markers is you can right click and then click on edit marker to change the name, like for example, explosion. And you can change the color. And I have explosion number one. And if you want to go to that place, you just hit one on your keyboard and you're going to go to that place. It's not showing me the video because it's muted. But now when we press the one key, it's going to go exactly to that point. And that's it. Those are the basics of how to use Reaper for film scoring. I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.